thank you, Dr. Siram Ramakrishna, uh, and uh, Rudra, Samir, and all of you from the IIT uh, Alumni Association Committee for Sangam 2020. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be uh, with you today. Uh, but first, Siram. I have to correct, I, I didn't earn a PhD. I was with <laughs> IIT Delhi for three years and after having, I shouldn't say fight, uh, having, uh, didn't agree with the way things were going. So I gave up my PhD. Of course, uh, many years later, uh, Professor Raju, who was then the director of IIT, when he met me, he said, no, Dipanita, you, in any case, you are our alumnus. I said, sir, I didn't complete my PhD. He said, doesn't matter. But I must put it up front because you're talking of science and technology. And so I didn't complete. So I am not a graduate graduate from IIT. So my humble beginnings, Presidency College Physics, which, as you said, is a kind of a very uh, Bengali thing being yes. able to say I'm from Presidency College Physics, but Robinanath is in me. I've internalized him so much that uh, because entrepreneurship at its philosophical level is nothing but aesthetics and art and beauty. And that you learn from Robinanath. So I, I would think uh, that's so important uh, to be an entrepreneur, to realize uh, all that, because it's art and beauty that's ultimately that dictates what your product is, what you are putting together, what your services are. And so uh, your question about uh, public understanding and thinking about science and technology today, you know, the, the, uh, so if you're talking of uh, basic sciences or you're talking of applied sciences that we really need to understand, because a lot of people feel or are not really uh, aware of the role basic sciences, for example, math or physics can play uh, because that gives you the foundation. And these are areas of inquiry because they would translate maybe 20 years later, 30 years later, 40 years later into ideas that you see uh, in real life, getting translated into products and services. So having a good foundation of science, basic science, is absolutely necessary for any country to develop as a technology power or as any economic development. If you do not understand the basics of science, and if you're only thinking of engineering, ignoring the s and the uh, I'm talking of the basic sciences. Uh, I, I think after 20 years, 50 years, you won't have enough good mathematicians in the country. You won't have very deep thinking physicists in the country. And that is what we will be lacking. So I think it is very important regarding your question on the public opinion about science and technology. Public opinion actually depends upon what is being said, what is read. I, my understanding of public, the word public is a lot to do about what you tell them, what you communicate. So if as a society, we believe in that we are a rational society and science needs to be promoted, that has to be communicated to people. It is just not about in the science community, there has to be a relationship and dialogue with how science impacts life, how healthcare impacts life. Nowadays, very funny, you know, everybody I talk to, every second person understands clinical trials. Because there's so much discussion on COVID and clinical trials, everybody seems to know phase one, phase two, phase three, doing clinical trials of vaccines. My sister was never bothered about anything. Uh, she was, she's been a housewife for so many years. She was asking me about phase two trials. Wow. Wow. Interesting, because there is this discourse happening. It all depends upon exposure and discourse. And if we have a discourse on science and technology, people would absorb it. People mm -hmm. are actually wanting to hear things. If we talk about it, 
if we make it mainstream, it'll become mainstream. If we keep science in the echelons of uh, some elite uh, mm -hmm. universities, it'll remain there. So that's my take on science and technology. Well, that's a very interesting way of uh, uh, putting uh, across questions, I must say, Siram. Be because, you, you know, it is... Uh, for, let, let me first clarify, I haven't spawned 700 companies. We have, through IKP, we have supported. Because spawning means directly doing it. So I, I would rather use the word supporting. Uh, so, oh, this looks like... Uh, yeah, I, I think what you have put up on the screen is spotting unmet needs and opportunities. I think that's a very important thing because uh, not every people observe what uh, they see. Everyone sees, some people observe. Others actually think of, after observing, converting it into a... Uh, uh, a proof of concept of an idea which goes into a product or a service. That requires the first and foremost thing, of course, is spotting an unmet need or an unmet opportunity that is there. And if you can spot it, you have to first ask yourself, why me? If others can do it, is it, it need not be new to the world. It could also be new to your local, your, your environment. All ideas need not be new to the world. Uh, Uber was there, Ola was an Indian uh, version of it, but it has done great service, I must say. Uh, yeah. it, it, of course, apart from anything, the car hailing, the taxi hailing thing, it gave a challenge to Uber. So it didn't become a mon monopoly in, when they came to India. And I think that itself is a great service. Both their uh, kind of service levels went up because it's not a monopoly. Uh, so, you know, spotting an unmet need, but then you ask, why me? Why do I think I can do it better than others? And so you have to have the ability to take risk. So the way you have put it, ability for taking risk. Yes, I think uh, that is an extremely important. People, when ability to take risk does not mean that you have the ability to execute. Ability to execute is a team uh, work. It, you cannot, to begin with, probably you are uh, the person who uh, writes the codes, you do the fundraising, you are the janitor, uh, you are cleaning the uh, toilets, but at the same time, you need to build a team. And it's not that you have to do everything. You have to know what your shortcomings are, what you are good at. And so it's so important to know what you are not good at and having complementary uh, skill sets in the team. And it's ultimately, it's the ability to execute, 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 execute should be the mantra. And how you mm -hmm. execute would only show you whether you can scale or not. Ideas are a dime a dozen. You can have a great idea. Uh, you may have your own ability to take risk, but as a team to able to take risk and be able to create value, that's extremely important. I, I, I love this. Okay. Uh, so when you say uh, what it does, the role that you want to know, uh, so research parks and incubators are uh, like economic development agencies uh, that help a region to uh, develop uh, in uh, certain ways in terms of their economy, in terms of business, in terms of technology, in terms of innovation. And uh, in the mm, last 20, 30 years, uh, we know that uh, it is absolutely essential to be innovative in order to be 
uh, a knowledge driven economy. India aspires to be and is a knowledge driven economy and aspires to have its uh, imprint in the world map of knowledge economy. We are the third largest startup economy. You may be knowing that, Rundra. Uh, so uh, the idea is to have these enabling mechanisms where you can, if you have an idea, where do you go and incubate your idea? Incubators for babies are where uh, fledgling babies who are not fully matured, pre a little preterm are kept. Yes, right. Incubators where eggs are hatched. Incubators are also business incubators, technology business incubators are places where businesses, business ideas mature. Uh, so in the first few years, uh, uh, an entrepreneur or, or, and a startup is so uh, vulnerable. So this is kind of a good place, a home where it can go, grow. So it's like a nursery, if you want to say, to make it go be After a point, it goes into the uh, real world to fight it out. Some make it, some don't. But if you, uh, th there is enough um, literature and uh, information to show that uh, startups that are incubated uh, in incubators and research parks have uh, uh, a better chance of surviving beyond three years outside in the outside environment. So th that's the idea of a research park. So we are a knowledge park, but we didn't want, to, so we are in life sciences space. We didn't want to say a uh, biotech park or life sciences park because knowledge is changing. Today, what the most important thing we may say uh, is probably life sciences. Tomorrow, it, there may be another area that would become so important. So we just wanted to say knowledge park. So we are uh, actually encouraging and supporting knowledge-driven enterprises, large companies, mid-sized companies, and small companies. Incubators are for uh, fledgling startups and small companies, and the Science Park is also for mid-sized and large companies. So, you know, uh, there are certain things that have, uh, when you say new norm, it has become uh, normal, uh, like uh, the way we are meeting today. Yes, ma'am. If it was uh, a year back, you would have told me to come to Chennai. Yes, ma'am. Or uh, Maxim Ramakrishna could have actually, uh, Siram could have actually uh, been on video, or maybe we would have traveled to Singapore, for all you know. We would be sitting at NUS to do this meeting. But it is so, this actually reset the thinking. It made people think that let's see what the way we are conducting life and business. Is that the only way to do it? If there may be other ways which are more efficient. So most companies, if you ask, they'll say the productivity has gone up. It is also true that there is a lot of stress in people adapting to the new ways of life. But human beings, I believe, are quite adept to changes. Uh, and change per se is a way of life. Change is the only constant in life, if you know that. Because you see that the way we used to write letters, we started sending emails. The way we used to take pictures, that has changed. The way we used to do banking, that has changed. Yes. The, all kinds of things have changed over a period of time. So change is normal. Only thing that has happened this time, you know, Rudra, I must say the disruption is binary, almost binary. One day you're told you cannot do ABC. That is a very, that's a disruption that kind of people uh, felt difficult to uh, internalize and adopt. But over time, people are adapting to it very well. I'm seeing uh, elderly people at home 
who never thought that they will send emails. They're becoming quite good at emails and WhatsApping. And so, so, uh, so it's all about being able to individually, in businesses, in life, a lot of changes are happening. Most people will, in normal times, what happens, there, there are what you call early adopters. Any new idea that comes, there are some early adopters, there are risk takers, and then there is diffusion. It goes into a large population over time. The same with email, if you see, with ATM, with credit cards, with everything. Uh, so that's how uh, technology diffuses and people adopt it. Uh, a proper noun becomes a common noun. Oh, yeah. okay. Xerox, a photocopying becomes Xerox. Xerox is not written with a Z capital. It's okay. X capital. It, it is with similarly Google. It becomes either a common noun or a verb. Yes. Then you know the technology has moved out of that purview of that elite thing for few to a lot of people. Many of these changes that are happening will stay. The question is, how people are going to adapt to it, adapt to it. I, I think uh, people are already kind of uh, learning how to adapt to it. Uh, in uh, So uh, classroom teaching, if you ask me, I think it will become hybrid. There'll be a mm -hmm. lot more online and mm -hmm. offline. There will be credit sharing with just not the IITs. I, I think now you can do credit sharing across IITs, right? Uh, I'm not very sure, man. but uh, in a semesters where we have in foreign universities, credit sharing does take place. So uh, I think these will become much more common, okay. credit sharing. So, so a lot of things that you'll be able to gain by doing it online uh, will be nice. possible. Uh, so, uh, so education to me, th there's a lot of benefit of meeting. So being able to console somebody by holding uh, his or her hand yes. is very different from being able to look into uh, the screen and talk. Yes, that's the divide between <laughs> physical and virtual. And so, but, but you know, at the same time, there's a lot of advantage being able to communicate. So yes. I think people will learn, the ways will change, but uh, uh, that will happen. So there are advantage, healthcare, for example, you asked about health. Uh, it is. It will become much more uh, uh, point of care. Uh, so it will be personalized. There was a trend. It is not that COVID made it. There was this uh, change of uh, point of care uh, and home care coming into being. Uh, for quite quite. So that's a trend. But COVID has made it almost essential. So. So this, I would think, is a disruption that has changed. People were not adapting it. Now everybody is willing That's to right. adapt it. So the uncertainty and the uh, sense of fear is making people adapt to a lot of technologies earlier that they have not adapted to. No, I don't think so. The way people function would change. Mind is something very open, you know? Uh, people, it's if people have the aspiration, they will find ways to do it. Uh, it is true that for hackathon, at times you need to be together. Yes, uh, so yes. an online hackathon is a very different concept, because, especially if you have to make something. Uh, it is uh, if uh, you need a workshop to make certain things, suppose, so you do it together. But I think that's why I said hybrid. So there'll be a lot of things that you can uh, do by uh, through forums, through online uh, exercises uh, that uh, you can do uh, boot camps, you can do various meetings through forums, brainstorm ideas. I, uh, what will change, you know, 
I, I th this is a, a feeling I have and a, we are doing strategies for that. Uh, suppose uh, now in India, we say Bangalore, Delhi, Chennai, Pune, uh, Hyderabad. Uh, these are some of the hotspots for startups. Yes, please. Because there's more mentorship, there's more funding, there are these uh, great talent availability. The moment it becomes a lot more online, I think the tier two, tier three cities would have towns. Those boys and girls would get much more exposure because that is main, that is going to become mainstream. So there, they will have their have a voice, which in earlier times, pre-COVID times, if I say, didn't have so much. So I think this will give them a platform and an opportunity to able to showcase their ideas. What happens is uh, human beings, we're all uh, a bundle of exposures. What we have been exposed to, what we have learned is what we are. So I think if we can give uh, the tier two, tier three uh, city uh, boys and girls, uh, men and women, uh, the opportunity they will and give them the exposure. They will come up with fantastic ideas. Uh, some of them will surely rock. You'll hear already that's happening. Jaipur is doing well. Patna, you see Dihat and all uh, those, those kind of startups. You'll see um, Jodhpur. Uh, there are some startups. Jaipur, there are some good startups. So things are happening. Chandigarh, it's happening. It's not that it's not happening. I think these numbers will scale. So. I don't, so these are kind of cycles. So there, there are some, in business terms, if you see, there are some short cycles and there are some super cycles. Yes, ma'am. So this is a different kind of a cycle. So, but I, I think this change will actually open up the vista for a, a, a lot more uh, student entrepreneurs. Thank you, ma'am.